for the children. We all like to feel that we have someone who has our backs, right? And that someone can come from our families, or our friends, or our faith community. Well, tonight, you are helping us help kids feel that they have someone in their corner. We provide this with youth support groups that we conduct through area schools. And these support groups help kids feel that they're not alone in dealing with their hard worlds. Also, we help kids um, have an adult relationship with a mentor, and that's done through our kinship program. And again, these kids have a friend that they can spend one-on-one -on -one time with. So with that, again, thank you so much for your support of these kids, and you know, blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you. The tree is glimmering with lights and ornaments. Thoughtful gifts are wrapped and lying under the tree. You can relax, sit back, listen and sing with the spirit of Christmas.
It's Christmas. And so to all here tonight, in this soft candlelight, we trust that you will take from story and song we make. These are gifts to you we impart the magic of this season into your heart. You are the light of the world, just as a city on a hill will not be hidden, and neither do people light a lamp and place it under a basket. Instead, they place it on a stand and give light to everyone. In the same way, let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good deeds. Making the world a better place is like lighting a candle to chase away the darkness. I light your candle with mine. Each of us can light another, carrying and tending the flame. When helping others, each of us make a brighter difference, sharing our light with them. It loses nothing when our light lights another. Our own light does not diminish. Be the light when hope lies in the shadows, a light to another's way. Keep candles burning brightly when trouble appears. Light another's flame. All journeys are possible when you can see the way. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Please join us in singing Rejoice, Rejoice Believers, found in the back of your program. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Behold my servant whom I'm uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment. He shall not cry out nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth and all shall wait for his law.
Thus says God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which comes out of it, he that gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to they that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people to open the eyes which are blind to bring out they that sit in darkness out of the prison of their own making. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell of them to you. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. Please join us in singing, O come, all ye faithful, found in the back of your program.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth and into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is a Christmas prayer by Robert Louis Stevenson. At this time of year, may we share in the song of the angels and shepherds, close the door of hate, and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and goodness with every greeting. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be children, and the Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts. Please join us in singing the first Noel found in the back of your program.
And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Please join us in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory, found in the back of your program. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and in the manger lay the child. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that they had heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. How do you capture the wind on the water? How do you count all the stars in the sky? How can you measure the love of a mother? Or how can you write down a baby's first cry?
greatest love, a poem by Anita Jonasson. A mother's love is deep, enduring. A mother's love is sure and strong. This love surpasses understanding, a love completely undemanding. Willing to live, willing to give life and limb without a moment's pause or whim. Our God, our Father, our Creator loves us in this way forever. Take a moment, breathe a sigh, for in your Savior's arms you lie. It was a few days before Christmas. The elderly man got up from his chair near the fire and walked to the window. He thought about years gone by, when his children would reach for their stockings and open the presents they found. The lights on the tree would shine brightly in their eyes then, reflecting the love all around. He leaned with his head on the window, watching the evergreens bend in the snow, remembering Christmas the way it had been years ago. This year, there was no one to open the gifts, no reason for trimming the tree. Just as a tear rolled down his cheek, he heard voices outside start to sing. 
What a sweeter music can we bring than a carol for to sing. Awake the voice, awake the string. Carolers sang as he opened the door. They were faces of dear friends. The shadows of his lonely thoughts were driven away by their song. His heart swelled. Tears filled his eyes. As he clung to their hands like a child in the night, he found himself in this reveling. What sweeter music can we bring than a carol for to sing? What sweeter music can we bring? The Ancients, December 21st, winter solstice and coming home. The winter solstice arrived here yesterday, December 21st, 2019, at 1019 p.m. Since prehistory, the winter solstice has been seen as a significant time of year in many cultures and has been marked by festivals. But one need not go into history to find the reason for veneration of the festivals of evergreen tree or bough as a part of the Christmas season. They are of the enduring things of the earth, and mankind has known them as long as humankind has been here. The pine, the spruce, the cedar, the fir, all those conifers which know no leafless season have been held in special favor when mankind would have need of life that outlasts all winters. We gather them now, even as the ancients gathered them, 
reaching for the reassurance of the enduring green life at the time of the winter solstice. For the pines and their whole family were, when the first few humans saw them, millions of years old, even then. When we gather them, we are reaching back, back into the deep recesses of time, even as the ancients, we are reaching for reassurance, for the beauty of the living green, the green of life, which outlasts the gray winds, the white frost, and the glittering snow of winter. So we go forth and bring in the pine, the spruce. We bring the festoons of wreath, garland, and tree, feeling a kinship with enduring things. They help us to catch, if only briefly, a needed sense of hope and understandable eternity. The celebration, December 24th, Welcome Home. No matter where you are today, you are surrounded by a sense of wonder and the excitement of celebration. There isn't a town in America without the gaiety of lights and tinsel, gifts and carols, not one. This is a festival of lights. They mark every street. Wherever you look, there is a lighted tree twinkling in a window, and tonight will occur the mythical visit of the most generous folk hero of our time. Tomorrow will bring the solemnity of the ritual and celebration of the festivities. The wonder is there, and the miraculous, in the biblical story of the nativity. The Christ child was born in a stable in Bethlehem, but almost equally miraculous is this holiday itself, for it is both a very holy day and a unique secular celebration. It is not only a festival of faith, but one of generosity and goodwill. There is no other occasion quite like this, no other holiday, no other holy day that unifies so many of us in a common spirit. It is the solemn festival of the Nativity, of the birth of Jesus. It is also Christmas, not a mass or a sermon, but a secular festival to the innocence of children and to the goodness of humankind. The hope, the dream, December 25th. There is the tree. There are the evergreen boughs and wreaths. There are the lights and the tinsel and the gifts and the old, old songs. But beyond these things, all with their half-forgotten meaning, is the simplicity of the event itself. What we celebrate is the birth of a child into a time of dissension and oppression, into a world of cruelty and suspicion. One who grew up to teach peace and justice and love of one another, it was as simple as that. The story of the birth itself is brief and eloquent, rich with awe and wonder and yet marked by simplicity. It was in a simple hill town of no particular importance. The priesthood had no hand in it. The birth was in a stable because there was no room at the inn. The first visitors were shepherds from the nearby hills, folks of no consequence in church or government. Yet it changed the whole history of humankind. Out of it grew the Judeo-Christian ethic to which our whole concept of truth and justice owes an enduring debt. The consequences of that night of wonder in Bethlehem still shape the thought and aspiration of much of the world. And so we celebrate the trappings of long traditions, now become more habit and custom than belief. But what we really celebrate is the obscure birth of one who lived and died for a simple creed, so simple that we still find it difficult to accept complete. We celebrate the hope and the dream.
The Birth of Love by Anita Jonasson. There's a babe in a manger, a child in a stable. Our God came to earth for to show us the way. The way to find virtue, the way to find truth, the way to find goodness and wholeness and joy. It's the path toward enlightenment, beauty and peace. It's the path full of trust and of faith and belief. When we travel that road, what we'll see and we'll feel is a love and all-encompassing love very real. When surrounded by love, we're inspired to care for our friends and our foes and the world everywhere. As we sense our connection to earth and all beings, we'll understand justice, humility, patience. We'll come toward each other with kindness, acceptance. We'll know we are part of a much greater whole and a gratitude swells as it fills up our soul. That babe in a manger, that child in a stable, the world's greatest gift come to teach humankind.
It's a good thing to observe Christmas Day. The mere making of time and season when we agree to stop work and make merry together. It's a wise and wholesome custom. It helps us to feel the spirit of the common good over the individual life. But better than observing Christmas Day is keeping Christmas. If we forget what we've done for others and remember what they've done for us, ignore what we think the world owes us and think about what we owe the world, to see our fellow man as real as we are, to look behind their faces to their hearts hungry for joy, to own that a good reason for our existence is not what we get out of life, but what we give to life, to close our book of complaints against the management of the universe and look for places to sow seeds of happiness. When we do these things, even for a day, we keep Christmas. So make time to take time to stoop down and consider the needs of children to remember the loneliness of the old, to, to not ask how much our friends love us, but whether we love them enough, to bear in mind what other people have to bear in their hearts, to shine our light so it gives more light, and to make our own garden of kindly feelings with the garden gate open. It's Christmas. Sometime, make time to take time to take a walk in the crisp evening air, listen to the crunch of snow underfoot, gaze at the stars and wonder. Think of the power of compassion and love. The Christmas spirit is more powerful than you think. People need Christmas to remind them how good they can be. If we believe that love is the strongest thing in the world, stronger than hate, more strong than evil, stronger even than death, and that the wonderful life which began in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago is the image and brightness of love, then we can keep Christmas. And if we are willing to do this for a day, why not always? But we can never keep it alone.
Take these words and song we heard tonight home. Find love, accept love, accept yourself, and smile. Share the light of your candle. Remind yourself the differences you make, which are ones of lasting importance, are the little differences you make in the life of another person. And these are the lasting differences you make in your life. This will make your life joyful. Christmas time is here. Happiness and cheer. Fun for all the children call their favorite time of year. Snowflakes in the air, carols everywhere, olden times and ancient rhymes of love and dreams to share. Sleigh bells in the air, beauty everywhere, yule tied by the fireside, and joyful memories there. Christmas time is here, families drawing near. Oh, that we could always see such spirit through the year. Oh, that we could always see such spirit through the year. What sweeter music. Please join in singing Joy to the World. Mm -hmm. 